two, one. We are live in the present tense with Sam Stewart on 91.7 FM, WNJR Washington, and online at WNJR.org. We are back for our second episode this week, and I am very excited to have this guest in the studio on our last episode before Thanksgiving break. And listen, folks, WJ got it has got a big football game on Saturday for their bowl game versus the United States Merchant Marine Academy. And my guest on the show tonight has been doing a great job this year at his role as a specialist. That's right, we've got our first ever specialist kicker punter on the show tonight. He is an all pack honorable mention, and earlier this year he was listed as the pack special teams. Player of the week. My guest on the show is a senior kicker from Freeport, PA. Everyone, welcome to the show tonight, Ricky Hunter. Ricky, how are you doing tonight? Good. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for coming on. Look, I'm really excited to talk to you. We got a great conversation going for the show. Had some good comms giving. Did you enjoy comms giving tonight? Yes. What, 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 was, what was your best dish or your favorite dish? Honestly, I like the stuffing, man. Stuffing was consistent. It's it's it was it was good all the way through. Good flavor. Texture. I like the turkey though. Yeah, that was pretty good. Turkey. Put a little gravy on. Yeah, it. I'm a big fan of the green bean casserole too. There's a little onion mm-hmm. things in it too. You know what I mean? That wasn't bad. What's the, what do you think about the tradition of putting the bread on the? Uh, we never discussed this on here before. The bread on the heads of. It's it's a lot. Uh, I didn't even get them up there. I have no <laughs> idea. It is crazy. <laughs> I walked by it already. They got. Yeah. It, I guess it's kind of like a tradition. You know, you got the, <laughs> the big loaves of bread at Calm's giving. And somehow, about five minutes after it comes giving starts, you end up with bread on the head of the Thomas and Jefferson, Tom, Thomas Jefferson and George Washington statues. But look, Ricky, big game this weekend. Like I said, W. Jenner, last two bowl games, one on one, one versus Hobart last year, lost two years ago against Brockport. So a big one tomorrow, a third straight bowl game for WJ after the COVID year. What's the big keys tomorrow versus the United States Merchant Marine Academy? Um. Honestly, just to win and hope, for <laughs> just hope for the best and uh, give it our all. Honestly, no, um, that, that's awesome. Try not to miss any kicks. And try to <laughs> now let's talk about senior day a little bit. What was that moment like? I saw you have to go out there with your family. You were you were real excited. You had this big smile on your face. What what did your family meant to you? What was that like to share senior day with them? I know you're coming back for your fifth year, and yeah. you can talk about that decision a little bit. But what that mean? You know, to be out there with your family on senior day. Um, it meant a lot to me for my family coming to every single game, and just uh, for them to walk out on the field with me was very, I guess, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was like it reminded me of high school a lot. Um, just it's almost over my like career, and I'm just it was just exciting and. We got a gift bag. <laughs> yeah, got, really? Yeah. What did you get about? We got a cookie, which I ate at halftime, <laughs> <laughs> which I was excited about. <laughs> we got um, a shirt and a cup, and uh, someone made like um, I got a picture. I saw that. That's really had us on it. That's really cool. That's awesome. Now. Ricky, look, like I said, you're our first ever specialist on the show. I had to make sure. We've had some kick, re- we've had Huss on before, and he's a kick returner. Mm-hmm. He, he, he used to before he got injured. Um, but look, you're first specialist. So tell us what the like life of a specialist is like. This is what the people want to know. What do you do during practice? What do you do during, like, do you have team meetings? Like, how is a specialist unique in their position on a football team? Okay. Um, so we do not have team meetings until Tuesday. Tuesday is like uh we watch people's film and stuff like that but um day-to-day practice is you know you go out there warm up and then um kick about almost 100 balls wow sometimes sometimes but like towards the end of the week you don't kick as much just so your legs fresh for saturday and that's mainly it i mean (laughs) you just chill and have fun so I think one thing a lot of people will know about kickers is like, we don't, you know, just being honest, a lot of times we don't really notice them until they're needed in the big situation. You know what I mean? Right. And there can be a lot of pressure. And obviously, like we just talked about, you know, you you, know, you had one field goal block, whatever field goal beside that, you've made it. Like you've been very consistent with extra points, 48 of 51 on the year. And you know, you've had some blocks there as well. So for you, like how have you dealt with the nerves of like being in those big moments? Because I think people don't realize like even, you know, extra points 
and some of the close games you guys play have been so crucial. I mean, we saw this weekend, I don't know if you watched the game, but the Green Bay Packers had an extra point blocked, ball gets kicked a little low, the guy runs past. Like, how do you deal with nerves when you're out there on the field? Um, honestly, I try to zone it out. I just try to focus on where I'm aiming and I take my steps back and get ready. And honestly, I'm not gonna lie, when that crowd screams a little bit, I, I get a little shaky at first, but I take a deep breath and realize I have to do my job and make the kick. So I make the kick, I guess. So yeah, you have, no. Like I said, great job winning that award, honorable mention. But when you talk about that routine, so, and you know, it's funny, maybe we can go ahead and talk about this. I had it later in the night. But we'll, we'll, I'll talk about the reason I'm bringing this up in a second. But when you're getting ready to go out as a kicking unit, and you know it's funny because you guys don't kick a lot, but is there like a preparation? Is it like a, like you might does someone tell you you might kick here? Like is the kick team ready? Like how does that work on the sideline? Yeah. So um, usually before the game, I like like when they were kicking off or something, I'll kick into the to the net for a little bit. And when I see like, um, if we're inside the 50, like the 40, so that would be like the 30 yard line, which is my range, I would- um, So so, third, so basically a 44 yard field goal. Yeah, like a 40, 40 yard and in is mainly my range. Mm -hmm. So what I would do on like third down is really like get kicks in and then take my steps and just like air kick and just try to focus on my mechanics and then the snapper would do the same. They would snap on the side, and then coach would say, like, a uh, field goal hot or something like mm -hmm. that, just to do it. And then if we're, like, deep, like, back in our territory, we would do, like, I'd be practicing punts and stuff mm -hmm. and working on catching the ball and, dro like, drops and stuff, and then they'll say get down there, and then I wait. And hopefully we get the first down. If we don't, right. then I gotta get out there and yeah. do my job. And what is it like playing as a specialist for a coach like Sirianni, who does like to be, I would say, on the aggressive side when it comes to fourth downs, whether it be kicks or punts. Like he's gonna, you know, he has a lot of trust in his offense. He has a lot of trust in Jake and guys like John Huss, Ray, um, all those guys. You know, Rosati. Mm -hmm. So, what's that been like? You know, having to wait long periods of the game where you might not be doing anything. How do you stay loose? Well, how I stay loose is basically just kick. Honestly, I kick into the net constantly. I know I'm not supposed to really. <laughs> I'm gonna tire my leg out, but I do it just to really know I'm gonna kick the ball good. And Sirianni surprised me sometimes with like, there was one game last year and it was against, I think Bethany, and it was like third down and he called a field goal. This was like way at the end of the game mm -hmm. when we were winning by a lot. And he wanted me to kick it and I was like, oh. So I got ready and I ran out on the field and kicked it and made it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Okay, now the thing is, uh, we kind of alluded to this a little bit already, but you do, and I saw you done some kickoffs as well, but you know, you meant to doing kicking and uh, punting, field goal kicking and punting now. Do you have a favorite? Which one do you prefer? <laughs> um, I do prefer, I feel like I would prefer definitely field goals and kicking. I know it's, it is nerve-wracking, like if you miss, you lose a point, but I feel like I'm better at it. Mm. And punting, I guess if you shank it, it's not as bad as missing an extra point or something like that. But um, yeah, I, I would say probably kicking because I feel okay. like I'm better at it. And, I got gotcha. you. So you came here, and you know, let's go ahead and get into this. Let's get into your story. Um, when did you start kicking? You know, we'll, we'll just focus on kicking here. When did you start kicking? Well, um, so I was about, so I played soccer till I was seven. Okay. And when I was seven, I used to get to my high school with like games with my dad. And uh, one of the games, my I found a high school ball under a bleacher, so I grabbed it and my dad held it on his butt, like his boot, and I kicked it and it went in. My dad said, we might have something here, like, you know what I mean? So I went out for the football team in youth because my dad wouldn't let me play until I was seven. So I played other positions, obviously, but uh, 
we would kick and we we're probably literally the only youth right youth football team that actually like uh make some extra points and when we did back then it used to be two points because it was harder to make right. because you were young so and that's when i started and i used to do uh also pump back pass and kicks oh right and when it, i did those i actually made it to the steeler stadium wow but, yeah that's awesome now up to that period to high school i understand like you kind of got some recognition as a good kicker even in high school so tell us about that that you kicked it over somewhere i'm a bucks fan you hit the Bengal stadium the bucks stadium tell us about that a little bit yeah um so it was my senior year uh i was kicker punter and i did other positions but um my dad knew this guy from the blue and gray all american and he said you come out and try to like do uh, field goals and extra points for this blue and gray, blue and gray all American game, and we said all right, and we asked him where it was, and it was on the Cincinnati Bengals stadium, and I kicked a forty yarder there. Wow! Actually, it's and he said I was on the team, so we flew down. It was like uh, I think it was actually during this time, and we flew down to Tampa Bay, Florida. And we went there and we stayed a couple nights practice there, which was a crazy experience. And we, sadly, we went to the Buccaneers Stadium. It, it's not sadly, but like it was sadly, it was like raining and pouring. Oh, okay. So it was like very hard conditions to like kick in. Mm -hmm. But I made uh, a field goal and I think an extra point there. Oh, nice. Now, that's a good point because I feel like you know that it's really good to get you in here because I feel like so many people do have questions. It's not something we hear about a lot. Like like I said, you kind of just go through the game watching the offense and defense. Then like you need the special teams player. Then all of a sudden they're like, oh, it's raining. It's gonna be tough for a field goal or it's cold. So how do conditions and you know I know we don't typically get a whole lot of snow during football season here, but you know the kind of conditions you play in, how does that factor? Do you think about that? Because it also obviously is something that comes into play. So. Uh... The big factor, honestly, is the wind. The wind is very tough. If it's really hard wind, it's good kicking one way and it's not the other way. Cause that ball, if you hit it too high, that wind just takes it and it just shortens the kick. But like snow and stuff, like it's, the ball gets cold. So the ball is not gonna hit as well as it normally does because it's freezing and that ball just, it's like stiff as a rock and rain's not too bad actually interesting i well for the holder i assume it would be maybe a bigger problem for, yeah for the holder it is it's definitely like a different factor but like when i'm catching punts and stuff in the rain i don't really have that much of a problem with it and i feel like i kick better in the rain just because you have to focus more mm, interesting instead of uh like kicking it on like a sunny day, no wind, it's nice. Then you're, you literally just, you can't take a kick for granted, but sometimes you do in those situations where it's sunny and perfect out. Now, one thing you want to talk about, or I wanted to talk about tonight is the kind of that relationship between the, the snapper and the, you already don't want to ask. Like, I always notice that in the NFL, it's like they're constantly practicing like, snapping during like the timeouts and during the pregame and during the halftime you see the specialist come out and practice snaps to the punter like why is that why is that relationship so important and why is it practiced so much um because i feel like the re relationships supposed to be like really important for that is because you have there's a lot of trust involved interesting in, in it because you got to trust the snapper to get it where that perfect spot is and you got to trust your holder to put it down and at the right time but it's not i they're like it's not only just the snapper and the kicker and the holder it's also the line too because they have to block if they don't block it's over so all 11 people have to be perfect right that's why it's like a little hard but once you so is that ever something you think about when you're kicking? Because I know you've, you know, kicked some from far out, you know, you haven't had too many opportunities to kick field goals because like you said, you guys do go for a long fourth, but like when you see a far field goal and you have to kick maybe a little lower, 
on maybe like a wind. Is that something you consider, like the line that they might be jumping up and trying to block it? Um, or do you even see the guys come off the edge or any any defender? Do they come into play at all on a kick? The only person that comes into play is honestly, what you if you get it off in time, you're fine. But you you have to kick it high, up in the air instead of line drive. Mm -hmm. You gotta kick it high, no matter what. I get I like the wind. Yeah, but um, you just gotta know your distance. And you do have to get it up in high. Now, let's talk about your story coming to WJ, because I understand like, you didn't have the conventional path coming here, like I said, like, uh, for the I, I you know, didn't see the stats for the first couple of years here, and you actually had an interesting story to kind of get the position where you were. So at the end of high school, obviously, you know, we're about the same age, and it's funny, because people uh, our age have a much different experience than someone who's a freshman right now with COVID. So. What was your recruiting process like that? Obviously, you were all American, you know, in that game in high school. Why'd you decide to come to WJ? So, uh, I visited WJ, St. Vincent, and um, IUP, Clarion, and all that. And I liked this school a lot. So, my freshman year, I liked this school. It was between IUP and here. And I kind of went for the route of obviously football. And also, I feel a lot of people at IUP, I knew that was going there, so I picked that route. out. And I guess it was a good, I mean, it was a good decision, but it was a bad decision as well because I didn't really enjoy it as much as I do now. Because mm. when I came here, it just feels like you get more reps, you get more interaction with the coaches, you mm. know everybody, and it's just like, uh, it reminded me of, it just reminds me of high school football kind of, but obviously high school football beats it all, I feel like. You said high school football beats it all? Yeah. I feel like around here, well, I was, you know, you know Nolan Lutz, uh, he's in the baseball team. He was he was talking to me one time, he was like, high school football, if he just didn't want to play in college, it was so fun. And I guess in the whip, you play in the whip field, yep. it's just like a different type of, um, you know what I mean? Even JRM, who I've been, you know, working for and, um, you know, they do a great job, honestly. I don't know if you got a chance to check them out. They, they do a great job with the highlights and stuff, but they do the high school games. Mm -hmm. uh, did you see that? They actually made that ref go by. When you see the ref, he was like first down, like the oh, Pittsburgh. Yeah, the Pittsburgh. That, that was uh, JRM. Okay. I think it was Upper St. Cl I don't know the high school. Upper St. Clair, maybe? So the high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, like, he was like 15 uh, yard penalty, first down. Yeah, really yeah. answer. Um, <laughs> but so for you, after IUP, did you reach back out to Coach Triani? Did he reach out to you? Well, actually, fun fact is, uh, I reached out to the guy who recruited me, basically, is uh, Coach Bobich. Bobich. Okay. Is he still here? Uh, yeah. Okay. He, uh, I text, I text him in, uh, um, I guess I did, I just texted him, and I got him on Twitter, too, but I said, hey, are you looking for a kicker or a running back or whatever? And he said, yeah. And I said, all right, well, I'm just gonna transfer and go to WJ, just have fun. And I did, and here I am. And you had that shoulder injury as well you are talking about for the show, so yeah. what was that like? Um, <laughs> How'd you injure your shoulder? So, <laughs> well, what ha here's what happened. So it was like a week before camp, and I was practicing, and I dove for a ball, and I jammed it. And it Cause you were still trying to play running back at that point, Yeah, right? yeah, so I, dislo I dislocated it, and I tore my labrum completely. Wow, man. And I tore my upper bicep. And I. And that must have been some pain. Right? Yeah. Whew. I sat in the hospital for an hour with the dislocated. It was nice. There's nothing worse because I, I had a, a sprained AC joint. That's not even, you know compared to what it, you have, but like, when you have that shoulder, it like hurts yeah. when you breathe. You know what I mean? It's. It's raw. Yeah. I'd rather break. I, I'm telling you right now, I'd rather break a bone than get a dislocated. Not on wood. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You come back for your fifth year. Now, um, for you, what was that rehab process like? Like, I know, like, I can just, you know, I, you know, we haven't talked too much. I can just tell the way you're talking about it. Like, you went through some difficulties during that time. So how did you stay um, positive? Because obviously you're a very positive guy, very upbeat. Like, yeah. how did you kind of stay? Because obviously you just transferred and you're like, you didn't get to play your freshman year because of COVID. Like, yeah. what was that period like? Um, It was rough. I mean, I went to... I, I kept going from, like, I moved in WJ at camp, met, like, Anthony and all of them, and then 
um, I just have to, I had to go back and forth from school to home, school to home, and then do schoolwork, and I literally couldn't even type, like, it was so hard, because I couldn't move my arm, mm -hmm. and, and then I had to be in a sling for so long, and then finally, when I got out of it, uh, I did, like, rehab and stuff like that, and then when I got back, I, I finally, like, so, like, at practice and stuff, I would catch balls for them and stuff, and I just like tapped the ball with my foot, and I just couldn't wait to get back out there. <laughs> and then I finally did, and I worked hard in the summer and just tried my best. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Now, for you, Ricky, what do you love about the sport of football? <laughs> um, I'd say the atmosphere. Uh, it's definitely, uh, it's fun. And I like, well, I, what I like about it is you have like someone to go to if you need like advice or something like that, mm -hmm. instead of um, like coming to college, if I didn't play a sport, I, it would have been like weird for a little bit meeting people, but you meet a lot of people and you have like, a bunch of brothers, I guess, mm -hmm. and the coach. If you if you live far away, the coach is like your dad. Basically. I agree. No, I agree. and that's what I like about football, and also the contact. I know I'm a kicker, but like I love contact. So like last year when I was kicking off, I'd always try to get in the <laughs> every time. I love. It's it. always like the high plays on like ESPN too. Yeah. Whenever a kicker release, you know, like Pat McAfee, you mm -hmm. know what I mean. So, oh, that, you know, something we haven't talked about that you guys haven't had to do too much is, like, onside kicks. Yeah. that's That seems like a real skill. And I know, like, Jackson's been doing some kicks and stuff, too, but... I would be the on. on oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So what's the thought there? Because um, I think these are, like, little things in football that, like I said, people don't think about, but become extremely... Like, your team needs that onside kick. You're like, oh, that was a terrible onside kick. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. so people say you want a big bounce. Is that true? Because, like, I think in baseball, one of the hardest things to feel is like a ball where it's like over your head yeah. or a ball that's short like if it's a hop it's like right here obviously mm -hmm. so what are you trying to hit the ball with the thought there because uh, did you guys have any this year no we haven't. i was gonna say because i think the, the way it worked out the games you guys did lose you didn't need one but yeah. hey maybe you should pull one off then. <laughs> i don't know you but... said they uh you said us uh the merchant marine Academy. they they also kicked opening yeah game one time opening yeah but uh not to take away your question but what what kind of the thought process there um, honestly, you just got to kick the ball on top and you want it to roll on the ground for a little bit and then it has like a little hop and then it bounces. So you want it up. I, so like that's where the weird thing about football, it's funny because I don't know if you've ever watched rugby. I went to Australia this summer mm -hmm. and like the way, the way those guys kick the ball and the punts and stuff, they're so, because the way you, the way games kind of worked, it's, it's similar to football, but like you can punt instead of. You can't yeah. forward pass, but you can punt. Yeah. So, you know, I, I have a question about that in a sec. Um, but, so you want the ball to kind of get that roll with that oblong shape. Yeah. And then short hop, and you yeah. say you want a big hop. Yeah. So the guy, the, uh, the onside yeah. team can try to jump up and get it. Well, most likely you're going to get like a, it starts out with a roll, and then it goes little, and then boom, it goes big. That's like the number one. That's the best. Uh, yeah. And then, Sometimes you get just a, just a roller, which is like medium, and then you get like one that has like a little hop, and it's about to be a big one, but the guy just snags it. Really? Yeah. That's what I always wonder about, because, I mean, you remember the Falcons gave up like three, and they got like three mm -hmm. in a row left one time? The opposing team, it's like, or I'm sorry, they gave it up. Like, how, for them, how do you not, because I think a lot of people don't even understand the rules of an onside kick, like, the team doesn't have to wait for the ball to go 10 yards. You guys do. The kicking yeah. team does. The other team can go grab it, whatever. Yeah. So it's like, you're right. I feel like you get those guys that just realize that, come grab it on their hop, like a baseball mm -hmm. player. But what I want to ask about is, do you ever do rugby punts? Is that something you practice? I know that, like, um, when the, we started getting Australian football players over here, it became a more popular thing. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, I know what a rugby punt is. It's, uh, I actually find it pretty, I guess, difficult. But I could do it, but I, I'm not too, like, I'd rather do a straight-on punt than a rugby punt. I got gotcha. it's uh For me, it's less control, controlled than a normal. Right, because you've probably grown up. you run out. Yeah. And, 
I think this this get yeah, I'll have to send you some National Rugby League highlights. The the style they play in Australia is very similar to football. You get like six yeah. downs and stuff, but they'll like kick you know, I mean someone will break and they'll yeah. kick it. You know what I mean? It's just crazy. Yeah. There's definitely a lot of Australian guys in T one college football right now in the NFL as well that you see on T V. Um my next question I want to ask you is, what's your biggest advice you would give to a freshman specialist, you know, kicker or punter? And, you know, I'm sure you've had these conversations, who starts out at WJ or Coach Sirianni, what kind of advice are you going to give them? Or a football player in general, however you want to take the question. Um, if I had to give someone advice for that is, I'd say practice hard. And if you, if you miss a kick or shank a kick, the main thing is, I feel like a, what a coach wants to see is if you miss it or shank it, they want to see you not just doubt yourself and just get down on yourself and miss, miss, miss. They want you to see if you can take that miss and put it into like a better, like a better kick or like if I miss the field goal, I the next one I'm not gonna slam my helmet and miss it again. I'm gonna try to make it. And if I make it. You just gotta have like calm nerves, relax. You missed one, whatever. Mm -hmm. You just gotta have a laid back mentality. Right. As now you're a real laid back guy, so it works yeah. out, right? Yeah. <laughs> a little laid back. I, I I don't get mad too often. Now you have used the word. I like to you know really explain the terms for the the viewers at home so they can understand the sport a little better. For people who don't know what shank means, what does that mean, and what causes a shank? Okay. Um, a shank is like a missed punt where it doesn't look pretty. <laughs> uh, it's it's like if you're kicking a field goal, it's wide left, so it would be it's just no good. And what happens is if you're in a field goal perspective and you shank shank it to the right, or like miss it to the right, that would be a shank. But if you miss it to the right, that means you didn't swing through the ball. Mm. Or you follow it through, but you... This is from a right-handed, I remember a right-footed kick. Yeah, right. and you you pushed it, basically. Mm -hmm. And then if you miss it to the left, you're going to overswing, and your plant foot could plant to the left, and you're going to follow through to the left, and it's just going to go left. And for punts and stuff like that, you can hit it off your toe, your shin, which I've done. <laughs> <laughs> I've done before. Um, your toe, your shin, and uh, just like hit the wrong part of the ball, the front of the ball, the back of the ball, just wherever. Mm -hmm. You want to hit it in the sweet spot. I've heard the drop is the most important. I, like it I had is. some like, it is, it, it is. It is like number one important. And so you're not, really, you're not really like, I think a lot of little kids, you see like a little kid try to punt, they kind of yeah. toss it up and fit. So, so it's more like a drop. Yes. Um, just like, do you just, you know what I mean? Just release it? Yes. So you would, you first you catch the ball. Right, and most important step, catch, right? <laughs> catch the ball, and then when you catch it, you put it out, like, I would say like full extend kind of almost, and just drop it. You can't, when you drop, you you gotta make sure you don't pull it back, the ball with it, and oh. that means it's gonna be a bad drop. But you literally have to just hold it out, and just drop it. So that's why you see like NFL kickers practicing that all yeah, the time. Yeah, that's like the most important. And then you got the leg swing and all the other fundamentals. <laughs> How to think about the word, holy moly. <laughs> yeah. Now, Ricky, what's your favorite memory while you've been here at WMJ? I mean, on the field, off, mm -hmm. um, you know, I know you guys have had some real close games, some big wins. Does anything stick out to you? Maybe it's a practice? I, I honestly had that, um, I had a question in my senior senior uh, thing, and I honestly just said uh, the bowl game. But if I had to go back and like change it, I'd say probably my first like career field goal as like a college athlete was like a sigh of relief. Yeah, um, I didn't know if it was going in or not, but it went dead straight, dead middle, perfect, had the length and everything, and I just felt so excited because I haven't really. Like in high school, we kicked field goals, but rarely. Mm. So when we got there, we just, I just got excited. Huh? I think that's probably my favorite. That's awesome. And what made you want to come back for that fifth year? The fifth year? Um, well, I wanted to just, I knew if I didn't, if I'm not coming back, I'd regret it. Mm. And I feel like 
like if and if I didn't regret it who knows if I didn't but like I feel like I would regret it because I had that one more season mm. where I played this game forever and what's one more year you know what I mean right so you might as well do Tinker's gonna have long careers too you know what I mean you see something we'll talk about some of these guys in just a little bit but yeah, no, that's that's awesome. I'm really, you know, I said obviously like this bowl game is big and stuff, but I know you guys, you know, still trying to get back to the top of the pack, and you know, it, it's it's tough, like we said, because it's just a couple games, um, but it's gonna be really exciting to see you guys next year. You guys have, you know, some big home games next year, so I won't be here. But make sure y'all come out and support, you know, this game, all those home games next year, because it'll be really exciting. Um, let's see here. Hmm. My next question is, what is something in your life that you are proud of? Um. Wow, that's a deep question. Um, I think uh, I'll just I'll just say I think this is probably my favorite question I've one of most, my my favorite question I've asked on here. I think it's it's interesting to see people reflect. Um, I'm most proud of honestly. Uh, I don't know. I would say I don't know. It would be like I guess coming to college and like really graduate and playing football just because I'm going to be the first one in my family to graduate from college. Wow, congratulations. So I guess that's the proud thing. Yeah, that's awesome. Good yeah. for you, man. That's awesome. And who do you feel like is one person in your story who's made that possible? Like this person, if this person was in your story, you wouldn't be the person you are today. It's a lot of people. <laughs> um, But I'd say probably my dad. <laughs> um, just because in ninth grade I was playing football and I told him so we had like ninth, ninth grade practice and so we wouldn't get in and stuff like that so um, I told him one day I said I'm done like this is annoying and he told me to just break through like just keep going and when I when I did that um, we played our first game and I got in and I ran the ball and got a pick six and I had a blast and I don't regret it. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that story. Plus my mom. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just a tough question because yeah. everyone there's multiple people, but usually there's that one person who sticks out. Not yeah. not to say that other people in your story aren't important, but it's like you think of specifically the, you know, this person. Now, you know, what are you looking forward to most in the next chapter of your life after football's done. You know, obviously you got one more year, but you know, you're a communication arts major here, you know, you're doing some some things on radio, through podcast, you're doing some advertising stuff. Like, what are you looking forward to? Um, I'm looking forward to honestly I wanna I wanna coach oh, okay. awesome. for my high school. Uh, is that Freeport High School? Yeah, that's Freeport. So where's how far is that from here? It's about an hour and six minutes. Okay. And I do wanna coach I have a hobby I've been doing for two years now. And, and that, that is? And that would be uh, singing music. Really? Yes. Uh, I'm doing that. I don't really have my songs I've been working on recently. I have about like 12 or 13 or wow. 14 unreleased songs that I've been working on. And hopefully an album comes out this summer. I'm going to wow. But, yeah. Dude, so here's here's my idea. So, um, well, one, do you, do you still play guitar with your songs or? So no, it's an. Because that's how I met Ricky. Really, people, I met Ricky in guitar class. Yes, it is so hard. So I mean, I'm trying to still learn, but yeah, you only got to learn four chords for. Are you yeah. singing country or? Uh, no, it's like a post Malone type. Okay, it's kind of like an alternative. Yeah, it's like indie pop. Indie kind of, pop. Yeah. Very cool. Awesome. So here's my here's my idea. So I'm kind of. Think about this last episode that I'm gonna have. I'm hoping we can like get the gym or something. And I want this kid, Cade Patterson, from the golf team. You know, Cade Patterson. You probably met him probably. before. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing. I'm guessing you met him before. I, you probably. <laughs> so I was, I was thinking maybe he could like, you know, host and stuff. And I was gonna have like a musical segment. So maybe get like you and McAllister on. Like I could play some guitar. Like, like yeah. they could do something musical. You know, what yeah. mean? live music. <laughs> live music. Right. Would you be down? I'm down. All right. It sounds like it. Was. So you like to sing your own songs, but are there any songs you like to sing, like a favorite song you have to sing? What I'd like, um... I mean, not, not in this con I mean, yeah. I guess we could talk about it. I could learn on guitar. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, 
Yeah. Wagon Wheel by Dear Trucker. That's an easy, mo- easy one to play guitar. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I do like, I like all genres, honestly. Awesome. But like, Post Malone's like my. Yeah, he's really one. talented. Did you listen to him on Joe Rogan? Oh, I listen to him on Joe Rogan. I listen on Howard Stern show. And uh, that he was on the country thing. Yeah. You, you kind of remind me of him because I think he is about just sort of like just happy people. <laughs> like I feel like he's just like so genuine. You know what I mean? Like all the other artists are like trying to like act like hard and stuff yeah. like, for these rappers. Like and he, I feel like he still does a little rap, but he's more kind of like into the scene. You know? Yeah, he he definitely is. Yeah, I can play uh, circles on the guitar. Circles. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> But, um, wow, that's awesome. I did not know that about you. Did, did do like the guys that was like Brody and Schuster that? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, but I do have a SoundCloud right now. That okay. Just, that just has like uh, songs that I worked on like, awesome. a while ago. Good for you, man. That's really cool. So you want to do something with that after college, maybe? Yeah, I, I'm going to try to. Awesome. At least, at least try. If it doesn't work out. Doesn't yeah, work at out. least you tried, right? But, yeah. Man, that's awesome. That's really, really cool. Um, Speaking of which, if you had to listen to one musical artist for the rest of your life, who would it be? Would it be Post Malone? <laughs> okay. Dude, um, honestly, I would say probably Post. Post is. What's your favorite album by him? Uh, hmm, that's that's really hard. I'm gonna go. This might be a this might be an unpopular take, but I'm gonna go Beer Bongs and Millies. Honestly, Sto- Sto- but Stoney's good. The only reason why I say Beer Bongs and Bentleys, I'm with you on that, is because I had one of the best summers of my life. Me too. Of my life. This is funny how you associate music like that. Yeah, that's definitely one of them. I like it. Yeah, I think so. But Circles really had like a new feel. And yeah, that was cool. I like. What's the new one? I'm, I'm completely uh, blanking. The one that just came out. The new one is. He just released. I listen to. Oh, his- I love Austin. Yeah, yeah, I listened to a couple songs off that one. That's really solid. I mean, I like that. He definitely, if you watch the Howard Stern show, he really gets into it and talks about like what he's been through and especially like the stuff. And I saw some clips on if that. If you listen to his album, you really get to. Feel well, he's he had some like substance, but people were like worried about him for a little bit. Yeah, I mean, not he wasn't like into like you know drugs and stuff like that, but he just drank. Yeah, and he drank a lot. And then he got his, himself out of it. So he's like, Yeah. Oh. Have you seen the video of him with Lil Baby? Where he's like, Yo, he's like, Hey there, Delilah's playing. He's like, We gotta sample this. We gotta, oh, sa- yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta sample this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> That's really cool, Ricky. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Now, if you were given the ox at a party and you're the DJ, right. what song would you put on? You have five seconds. <laughs> Taking shots. <laughs> if I had to, or, okay. or honestly, party in the USA. That's a good one. That's not a bad. I'm one. thinking for a post football. Have you heard Jackie Chan? I yeah, just want yeah, to I love that. That is a good. That's yeah. a good part. It's like that little EDM vibe too. Yeah. That's a I just ordered sushi. From, you <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? I, I love that stuff. But ooh, my favorite. Um. I'd say my favorite post one song is probably Spoil My Night with Sway Lee. I don't know if that one's yeah, a good one. Yeah, I like that song. Yeah. Um, I don't know what my favorite would be, honestly. That's a hard choice. He's got so I think it's... So I, 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 that's a great answer for that, what you rather, like, or what artist you listen to the rest of your life question, because he's got such a variety of music, yes. you know what I mean? And yeah. I think he might come out with Country Album. Yeah, and yeah. I, is sick. it? Is he the one that's doing stuff with Morgan Wallen or something? Did he, I see that? He did it with Hardy. Yeah. That one song, um, I haven't saved. It's like, it's three. Eight. Yeah, you kind of get some country vibes from him. Like, yeah. he could do the. Interesting. Awesome. Now, what's your favorite movie of all time and why? Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, the. Okay, here's, here's the thing. I like. Growing up, I watched 80s movies all day. Okay, let's get into all it. All day, every day. Um. If you, it, it's like different genres, but I like, like you know, Sixteen Candles, Can't Buy Me Love, all those. I didn't mind this. I I I, I liked all the nineteen eighties movies. Have you ever seen um, uh, Revenge of the Nerds? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I believe that's an eighties movie. It, yeah. Yeah. I just like I like them. I like nineteen eighties movies. Back to the Future. Just be yeah, just because it's it really like um. It's not all about like you know nudity and all that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. This generation, but I do like <laughs> Wolf of Wall Street. 
if I had to go like a favorite movie because I can yeah, constantly watch cool. that and it's a great. Movie. We I, I'm gonna have to one of the guys I'm probably gonna have on soon. We we have to do a movie association game with actors. Um, but I was thinking about it, I was like if I was to ask someone what's the Caprio's best role, like because I feel like Wolf of Wall Street is such like a it's such a good movie, but is that his best role? And like you know, that's what, is the acting is crazy in it, like so good. He should win a lot more Oscars, I think. But I, that was probably one of the great. Like the those awards don't mean anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I, I have to see uh, Killers of the Flower Moon. Have you heard, see, heard about that movie? It's a new one that just came out for a minute. Oh, with him, yeah. And De, De Niro might, and I Scorsese. Might, yeah, I might see. I want to yeah. see it. Yeah, I want to see that one. Um, I did, I double checked back. The feature was an eighties movie. But yeah, yeah, there's something about the those eighties movies that are um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yeah. Just to feel good, yeah. It's just life was simple, right? Even I've been using this. I heard someone use this example, like of like a, a, a American Pie. It's like these kids, like inter they're interacting. So funny, right? But yeah. they're just like these kids, just like hanging out, but they don't have like phones or anything. Like yeah. if you notice the parties in that movie, like isn't it weird? Like think about it, if there was like a party like that, like a house party that like they showed in the movie. How many people would be on their phones? You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Like and they were just like friends, they just hanging out and stuff. When they would hang out, no one was on their phone or doing anything. There's something admirable about that, like eighties movies. That's yeah. good. Yeah, I'm telling you, life was so simple. <laughs> you sound like my mom. Like, <laughs> about the eighties. I feel like I could live in the eighties. You, you give them the eighties vibe with the haircut. Like everything. You look like you'd be in an eighties band. I, I love. You could that. be the. <laughs> <laughs> I, you could be the guy who's going to save the the main love interest after she's moved away with the bad <laughs> love interest on a fall day mm -hmm. with some synthesizer music in the background. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I gotta send you this this reel I found on Instagram. It was like this guy playing the synthesizer. It's like when it's out, when it's like you're running to your girlfriend's house on a cool 1980s morning. Like, <laughs> then you have the synthesizer music, yeah. and wow, that's that's a really new awesome movie take. I love that. Thank yeah. you for bringing that. So, what is something in your life that you haven't got to do yet that you want to do? Um, so you're bringing a lot of good questions. Thank you. Um, I would say. I haven't got to do. Uh, you know what? I I like. <laughs> here, here's another. One. I like to go backstage on with Post Malone. That's cool. Like like with like buy a ticket backstage and meet him. That's really I'd cool. I'd love to meet him, or I'd like to go to like one of those. Um, uh, I forget what league he's in. Cristiano Ronaldo, like one of his games, like a soccer game. Well, he's in the Saudi league now. Yeah, I just feel, well, still, though. Like, yeah. <laughs> I feel like it would be cool to see, like, that out. Well, you might want to see Messi. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Apparently, if the River Hound won, Messi would have came to Pittsburgh or something like that. That's what someone told me. I don't know if it's true or not. But yeah, it's cool. Yeah, he could be coming to the U.S. City near anyone at this point. But, um,. Yeah, no, that's that's really cool. So I know you're doing your your uh, project right now in region of independent. What's it, what's it about independent music that you seem to like? You seem really drawn to that. Um, even Post Malone kind of has an indie. So I'm gonna sound really uninformed here. So I'm just gonna list some artists with that same kind of sound that I know, like uh, Skaggs, Mac DeMarco, Jack Johnson. You listen to Jack Johnson at all? Mm -hmm. Like Upside Down. I'll have to say maybe, some Jack. Maybe. I think he, it's the Curious George song, like oh, he, yeah, yeah, and like Pirate Turns Forty and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, he um, he, he did a cover of that from Jerry Buffett. But yeah, I like that. It's like I don't know, it's just relaxing in a way. I feel like. Mm -hmm. But why do you like that kind of indie style? Um, I guess because it's got like a okay. From my perspective, it, I you can use your voice on it more mm. than than like a hard type beat where it's like rap and it's like you can't really sing on right well i think that's what even like well that's an interesting point because i think i was listening to some some j cole i'm a huge j cole fan from Rockstar. like even kendrick uses his voice kind of as like jazzy instrument yeah. like i feel like in, like in music a lot of the times like um a lot of people don't use their voice as like an instrument you know what i mean like especially in like that kind of like where it's like a, a really solid like synthesizer beat or something like that. There's a lot of like hard beats and stuff. Yeah. Like the Kendrick, like some especially his early work, and like even on Mr. Mar, like he's using his voice like inflections and using this. You can hear it more clearly because the beat's not. And the beat's important. Don't get me wrong, but like you know what I mean. It's like I feel like there's. Um, I'll have to play it. I'll you know I'll play any song for you during the break. It's, it's called Rain Check Summer. I, it's one of the really ones that I like on here when I DJ. But um, wow, that, that's really cool. Now. I want to ask you just a couple of questions before we head to break here. Um, did you see the Bills game where they had 12 people on the field? 
I think I saw TikTok. Like, yeah. So what? Like, why does it seem like there's always too many men on the field on like field goal plays? Is it just because like it's just such like a? I guess you just gotta like. It's weird. Like you rush out there. Well, especially that they didn't have a timeout. Yeah. So they it, they so they like decided weird. they decided to not give the Bills 15 seconds. So they want to run all the way down. So Neo and then just the switch. Mm-hmm. But the Bills it actually worked out for the Broncos because they missed. But mm-hmm. the Bills had to switch personnel as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you guys like for special teams like that, you guys go over like who's on that every game, right? Yeah. So like we would go over on that, and then as I said like before, everybody would be. Standing next to one coach, and they're like kickoff hot. Right, but there's some guys who stay on the like. I know, like, oh, like Angelo. Is the, Angelo right. is on like both, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, Angelo and them. Like some of the Adam. Yeah, Adam. Adam would stay on the field. Like everyone else that knows that they're not on comes off, and then they just stay. And yeah. we go. Well, it's the same thing on the defensive side, like some of the defensive line and linebackers down, but yeah. it's critical. Like, that, that's what, you know, obviously for the Bills, they had, it cost them the game. Yeah. Maybe cost them a playoff spot, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy. Now, this is like, I just had to talk about this is such a big topic in sports, right? Did you see the thing with Draymond Green? The fight where he choked Rigo Bear out? You see it on social media at all? Mm, no. Really? Weirdly not. Really? I'm surprised. It's been everywhere, but basically, I just want to say, I think he's in the. He, he had, he had a right to do it. Maybe it wasn't the smartest thing in the world, but the guy is saying on Clay Thompson's day. I gotta show you. I gotta show you this after the um, the pod tonight. But yeah, it was uh, it was the weirdest thing. It's like this, this crazy like sports fight. I, I want to see that documentary Malice the Palace. Have you heard of that? Like where the the um, Pacers and the um, the Pistons got in the fight. Um, Have you heard of that? Nope. No. I, I'm a good basketball guy. Yeah, I don't really follow basketball. Really. No. Did, did you watch the uh, Bishop Sycamore documentary on HBO Max, BS High, you know, about that fake high school? Did you, have you heard of that? The Bishop I think Sycamore? I've heard of it. Yeah, the, heard yeah of it. it was like they were like faking that they were real high school and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you have to check that out. That's a good one. Um, yeah, that is a good documentary. But listen, I want to ask you your trivia question before we go to break here. And I'm sure maybe some of you at home could have guessed what the trivia question was tonight. But. Who has, made the, who has made the most field goals all time in the NFL? Is it Adam Vinatieri, Justin Tucker, uh, Steven Goskowski, or Sebastian Janikowski? We'll get your answer after the break. This is the present tense with Sam Stewart, and I don't put some of them. WNJR Washington and online at WNJR.org. As promised, we've got Lillian Francis with the Indie Track Rain Check Summer. Here, let me know what you th- let me know what you think of this track. Yeah, it's got like a vibe. Yeah. Yeah, I like her voice on it. Why are you thinking about the question you listen to it? I like you know, like into music, like you really like, look at it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Some people are like, oh, I like this artist just because yeah. it sounds, you know what I mean? Like, this is... Yeah. I just vibe. Like, I can see myself just showing the car to this. Right? Yeah. That's what I like about it. You've probably heard Mac DeMarco before. I definitely... Like, freaking out the neighborhood. Like, I, I probably heard of it. Yeah. It's just, like, I don't... I don't know a lot of, like, names. Really? So that's why, like, like, the, like, the names are out. But, like, you know what I mean? You probably go for, like, more of the sound. Like, you remember the sound of it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like... 100%. Yeah, I guess on here too, because I like, do like to talk about music and movies. It's like, I'm trying, I like, have to be big on the name, like, what's the name of that? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's so cool thing. My mom's going to love that. She loves <laughs> 80s movies. They're so, like, you could definitely couldn't make them today, but they're, <laughs> they're so awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. Like, um, my, my cousin Vinny, that's a great one. I haven't seen that one. Oh my God. Really? It's with Joe Pesci. Really? Mm-hmm. Cause like, cause and, uh, well, that, we were kind of talking about the ones that are like kind of feel good 80s movies, but there's yeah. like, what, like, Goodfellas Casino. Yeah, and you know, um, do you watch the new Spider Man? Like, yeah, kind of like yeah. with the ant, the the ant in it. You know, like ant. Yeah, like, uh, Ant Man. Yeah, yeah, that. Guy. Are you talking about the ant? Are you talking about Spider Man in the multiverse or Spider Man? Like, like, about- like the new Spider Man. Like when Ant Man dies. You, you know? I mean, he, he, and what? No, no, no. So you know, there's like the Miles Morales. Well, yeah, the but like I'm saying, like this generation, Ant Man. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. She is in my cousin Benny. 
Oh, 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 you're talking about, okay, I, I see. Yeah. You're talking about Tom Holland. Yeah. Oh, Tom, yeah, okay, I got you. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a great movie. It's so fun. Oh, it is good. They, um, oh, you're talking about the, yeah, yeah. Spider-Man was good, too. Spider-Man, yeah. Spider-Man was good, too. Yeah, yeah that's like Marvel starting to go down the hill, but that was a good one. Yeah. That was a really good one. Yeah, no, okay, I might have some video. Let's watch that. Well, because Joe Pesci's also in, um, Home Alone. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dude. That is so funny. They I are funny. They're hilarious. People like Elf a lot, but I feel like Hunger I Games. love Elf. Too. Elf is good. I like the Christmas Story. It's classic. Yeah, that's not the, the sequel was really good too. They made a sequel to it. Did you see yeah. that? Uh, it, it's on HBO Max. You know what? I didn't see. It wasn't publicized. It was publicized, but it was it was good. The other one that's really good is about uh, Thanksgiving. It's a, it's about Christmas. I think it's about Christmas. Planes, trains, and automobiles. It's an eighties movie. You'd like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, did you ever watch The Jerk? No. Well, that's the guy in From Playing uh, Trains. That's, that's a funny John Candy's in it, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a funny movie. Yeah, he just passed away, didn't he? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, but yeah. I think... Or a while ago. Yeah, a while ago. But, yeah. He passed away. I wish, you know who I wish is uh, Chris Farley. I love Chris, Chris Farley. Farley. Yeah. That's with uh, Tommy Boy and all that. Yeah, for like uh, he's on Saturday Night Live too. Yeah, yeah, with the uh, like the dancing one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, the wild band. Uh, what it? He always talked about the band. Forget what it. No, yeah, I've just seen that uh, that one where he's dancing with Patrick Swayze. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right. All right. And we are back in the present tense with Sam Stewart on 91 Foot of Hand with WJ Washington on a lot. WNJR. Uh, today we're talking with WJ Kicker and Punter Ricky Hunter. And today, Ricky's trivia question is Who has made the most filled goals in the NFL all time? Is Adam Vinatieri, Justin Tucker, Stefan Goskowski, or Sebastian Janakowski? And your answer is Ricky. I would say Justin Tucker, but yeah, let's go with him. Let's just go with him. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. It's actually Adam Vinatieri. I was going to say it, but I just felt like it was Justin. He played 24 seasons in the NFL. Wow. Justin Tucker has the record for the longest kick. Maybe you're getting confused with that. That one where he, like, it was against the Lions and he was like 66. You know what I'm talking about? Where it bounced off the crossbar or whatever. Did you have a favorite kicker growing up? Um, uh, Justin Tucker. Jeff Reed. Jeff Reed. He was a Pittsburgh kicker. He was okay. crazy. Like I, Chris Boswell was pretty good. Yeah, he is. He is. He he's one, consistent. He had one bad season, but he doesn't have the biggest boot, but he's yeah. certainly consistent. Though. He um, I did like Jeffrey. The only reason I knew him like more than like anyone is because uh, when I played like Xbox, the Madden and stuff, mm-hmm. he had like the craziest profile picture, like in the game. Really? His hair was just sticking up. Crazy. <laughs> he's wild. So. Looking like Brody Barton's team. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wild Bob man with the hair. <laughs> but it's interesting because Adam Vinatieri is actually the all-time leading scorer at 2,673 points. Wow. Like he scored more than anyone in NFL history. If you think about it. That's wild. It's crazy, isn't it? Yes. I think most people, I think more people probably pay attention now to kickers now that fantasy football is so popular yeah. and stuff. Like kickers, they get you those points, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. On a, on a Monday night, you need that kicker to get 25 points. You need a lot of field goals. But, um, that's why I got Justin Tucker. Yeah, there, there you go. That, that, that's really the biggest one I feel like if you get him. Because for most points, the, the points per kick um, would be like 50 plus. It's going to be like six, seven points versus like a yeah. 30 yards. It's going to be different. But, Ricky, thank you so much for joining the show tonight. It's been really, really fun. And I just want to turn it over to you for our quote of the day. Um, my quote is once you. Once you become fearless, life becomes li- limitless. I have it tattooed on me. Awesome. You want to hold it up and show the camera? That's awesome. Yeah. Now, like, we're talking about this. That So how many hours in total did that tattoo take? Ricky's got a full sleeve for those of you who are watching on YouTube right now or watching live or listening live, rather. How long did that take? For the whole one? It's like, total hours. I would say 18. 18 hours, wow. maybe. Super cool. So why the why the clouds and the roses? I know we talked about a little before, but um, so what I did was for the clouds and the roses. The roses represent uh, my uncle Ricky. He passed away, mm. but he liked Guns and Roses. 
Oh, uh, so uh, it represents him. And then, like the clouds is for like Zeus, Greek god. The angels. This is for my gram. She is not passed away. She just likes them, so I got it for. Her. And then uh, Naruto. I like Naruto. Oh, yeah, that's incorporated really well. Yeah. I feel like it's really. I like the ones that are like incorporated well. You know what yeah. I mean? They're not just like kind of all spaced out. So why Zeus? He's my favorite Greek god. Uh, he's like uh, the most powerful, I guess. And um, you ever watch like Percy Jackson and all that? You ever, were you like one of those kids who was into that stuff? Weirdly, no. Um, I it was like in four, maybe fifth grade, we did a uh, project on like Greek gods. Yeah. And I got the guy that made the wine, but um, <laughs> but, um, I, but I do like this. <laughs> I like guy. Zeus better, but I did. I get. I got the guy. Also, the shit, like uh, they've got. Uh, yeah, all the, like I really love those like ancient like Roman like paintings that depict like the Greek stories, like the Carnegie Museum. That's cool. Like the lore of everything and stuff. I was reading a, a Jordan Peterson book, and he was talking about like the way like, all those myths are like incorporated and like all the lessons they tell. It's interesting. It's interesting. It's really cool. And like, yeah, it's it's really that's so detailed. So did you get that drawn up before? Uh. Yeah. So I mean, there's, there's no way someone just like free hit. No, uh, no, no. He, he put that stencil, stencil on there. And, it so off. and then I have that line too. Yeah, that's awesome. Why the line? Well, the line and uh, the quote kind of go together. I had the quote first and then I was like, you know what? I want to get mainly a half sleeve, so I got a half sleeve. And now I said, let's do the full. But I got the line because he's the king of the jungle and he's not like basically afraid of anything. Right. And he's like, stands out and uh yeah so i got that awesome ricky i just want to say thank you so much for coming on the show tonight congrats on the uh, award once again and look forward to seeing you hopefully kick a lot of extra points that's yeah. the goal that's the goal right yeah. not many field goals a lot of extra points um <laughs> and you know look forward to watching you next year as well and once again thank you for coming on the show tonight thank you all right everyone i hope you have a great thanksgiving break we'll be back with three more episodes before the end of season seven here on the present tense. Two episodes that we back, and then we've got a season finale episode that last day in class. Until then, everyone have a great night. Remember to live in the present tense.